Hi, this is Catherine Rosen with Board Game Geek. I'm joined here by Clay Ross from uh, Capstone Games, and he's here to talk about New York Zoo. So, Clay, can you me, tell me about the game? Hey, Catherine. Um, yeah, so New York Zoo is Uva Rosenberg's latest game that just came out. Um, the U.S. release for this is next Wednesday, October 28th. Um, but uh, people that pre-ordered and everything are getting their copies now. But um, so New York Zoo brings um, Uwe Rosenberg's two famous game mechanics together. He's got animal breeding from your agricolas and whatnot, and his latest crave of um, polyomino puzzle piece uh, fitting under player board like a patchwork. And he combines both of them into one family weight style of game. So intriguing yeah i'm I, I really like it because of the theme as well um this is about building your own zoo um through these puzzle pieces and you can have up to five different types of uh, animals to display at your zoo um and it's really cool as you can see all the the puzzle pieces or not the puzzle pieces but the, the animal pieces are all wooden and they're all like cute animals you got the penguins um meerkats and I like the Arctic fox, and you got uh, kangaroos. Let me—you got all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, <laughs> just a bunch of cute little animal meeples in there um, that you're going to be populating your zoo with. Um, and there's also the breeding phase uh, of the game where um, certain things will happen, where uh, the they'll have babies, and you, you'll fill up some spaces, and you get rewarded with some attraction tiles like a roller coaster or just some extra stuff to, to build in your zoo. So um, that's kind of like super high level what's going on. Um, and uh, you can see your player boards there on the bottom. There's a brown area, that's your uh, construction zone. And what you're gonna do is um, you're, gonna, um, you're gonna build the animal enclosures there and populate them. And the first player to completely fill up the brown spaces triggers the end of the game. And they essentially immediately win um once they do that so, um, so can you yeah, take me through uh, a round yeah so if we could put that um elephant let's just pretend the elephant starts on that spot that it's right above right there um when it's your turn you're going to move um the elephant up to a number of spaces indicated on your player board um that changes depending on the player count uh, what's great is this game plays one all the way up to five players. So you get a really nice variable player count. And depending on the number of players you're, you're having, um, you'll use a certain side of the player board. Um, but let's just pretend for this example, we can only move the animal or the elephant up to three spaces, um, which is pretty typical. Um, so you can either stop on one of two spaces. Um, the space that it's on right now is an animal acquisition space where you would grab both of those animals depicted. And in this case, you've got the penguin and it looks like a fox. And you would put those either in your enclosure or on the little purple, uh, what they're called barns, um, on the upper left part of your player board. And each, each space can hold one type of animal. Yeah, so just like that, you would just take those two and then it would be the next player's turn. Um, the, another spot you can go to would be um, one of the um, one of those uh, polyomino spaces where you can, um, yeah, so you can go up to three spaces and you could take a polyomino tile and place it into your uh, zoo board area. Um, yep. And so you're going to try to puzzle this together so that um, everything fits and you've got to cover up all the brown spaces. Um, once you place a enclosure right there, you have to place an animal uh, in that in that enclosure um, and it has to come from your purple area or from another enclosure already on your board but just for the sake of brevity here i mean we could totally do this and yeah you could do it over there and then throw down the penguin there there you go so as the elephant keeps moving along around the board there's a couple of orange spots and once it crosses that at the end of the player's turn so yeah that would not be a space but yeah so the person playing would uh, do their action of putting that polyomino piece on their player board, populating it with the animal. And then because it passed a 
orange space, which in the game it's called a breeding space, um, the animal depicted, if you have two or more of those in one enclosure, then they, they breed and they have a baby. And I think that's the penguin one too. So if there were two penguins in that enclosure, you pass the uh, um, breeding space. So all penguins for everybody will uh, have a baby and they, they go in there. Um, once a player completely fills up their uh, enclosure tile, the, each tile has a small square on it, um, all the animals will be removed and you're rewarded with one of the brown attraction tiles of your choice um, to fill up your board. I mean, that that's pretty awesome. So like, yeah. So you can see all the tiny spaces on there and everything that um, each of the animals has to occupy for you to get the reward of one of the bigger tiles. And the attraction tiles are limited as well. There's, there's not very many big pieces. So you wanna race to get as much of those as possible because they're gonna be able to fill in the gaps for you. And yeah, so you got different shapes and everything to, cause you're gonna get some really awkward spots where you have like one spot with just like the, a perfect small square that you need to fill in. And that's where these come into play really nicely. So, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the turn. You, you're, what you're doing in this game is you're juggling the, um, one thing I do wanna mention before I talk about the strategy is when you do set up, you have these polyomino tiles. There's four shades of their colors. The darker the polyomino tile, the more physical spaces are on that tile. And the lighter the color is the, the least, uh, like a lower amount of, of, of spaces. So what that means is the bigger uh, one takes up more space, but it's going to be much more difficult to continually fill that up with animals so you can get rewarded with that attraction tile. Um, whereas the smaller pieces, you can fill those up pretty quickly and get a bunch of attraction tiles going. So you've got this balance of, uh, do I wanna get some animals in my enclosure so I can crank out and get a lot of um, attraction tiles or do I wanna fill up my board as fast as possible and, and try to do it that way? So it's a nice, it's a nice system that, that he's put in, into this game. Yeah, so this oh. is give and take constantly of placing and, uh, and uh, choices constantly about what way you wanna go. Do I want to go animals or, or space or finish exactly. things or yeah yeah and trying to strategize too you see a tile that you really want it's a it's like got the perfect fit for it but you also need an animal to to play that tile and so you're like ah, i, I want to make sure i have that is it am i am i setting myself up for like a, a nice combo move coming up in a few turns where you can fill up your entire enclosure and then get an attraction there's there's a lot of a lot to play with at this so um yeah, you I mean, don't want to plan too much either, because then suddenly your your choice is taken away from you, right? So, yes, true. <laughs> so, <laughs> one thing I love is this is a very accessible Uva game where um, you can introduce both elements of his animal breeding of his heavier, crunchier games, and he's still got the polyomino aspect of it. And literally last night, I was I have two kids. I've got a um, four year old and a six year old. And I got both of them to play. I mean, we didn't play a full game here, like, but you know, we're just playing around together. And um, my four-year-old, he could pick out the differences between the spaces. And he knew once we passed one of those orange spaces that a breeding was gonna happen. And he's he's a big penguin fan and he has like all these penguins in his zoo. And he's like, I get a baby penguin. And I don't know, it's just a cool like moment where we're just having a good time playing the game together and um, really just enjoying that. <laughs> it's it's nice when you can take some of those meteor concepts uh and, and you know crunchy you know games that you really enjoy but then bring them into something that you can introduce to younger players or you know family that doesn't necessarily play so much or friends who have never you know played anything other than monopoly right uh, and then yeah. see their eyes just kind of you know open with wonder when they realize that this is something, you know, different from what they've played before or the possibilities that are in this game, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's just that 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 was kind of like the, the point of this game is, is just to get that bridge that gap and, and you and you get um, people experiencing new mechanics or systems that they're not in, 
familiar with at all. So yeah, it's it's a nice it's a nice game, and um, I, I love also that it's one to five players. I mean, there's there's a lot there for it too. The, the solo mode is actually very difficult, um, but it's still enjoyable. So. Yeah. What kind of things does this does a solo mode do? I mean, in this day and age, solo versions of games are getting pretty popular. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a race against the clock. Um, there's a couple of tiles that are used in the game up there by the elephant you can see. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is your, your goal is to fill up your board completely full. The solo mode is played um, on the one, actually that one on the bottom left there is the solo board and you have to fill the entire board up by the time the elephant has taken two laps around the uh the track so it's it's a pretty tough i mean you got to be really good with playing the tiles and and uh, planning for that so uh, but there's there's a little bit more rules to it than that but essentially it's a race against the uh the clock so it'll i mean it's it's not something that you'll be i i would find it very difficult. If you could do it on your first try, that's pretty awesome. I mean, you're, you're really good at that spatial awareness, but I'm, oh man, I, I, I have not beat it on solo mode yet, so. Yeah. Well, that's an aspect about the game that's really fun with playing with younger players is they tend to be very good at spatial awareness, right? Compared to older players. So that maybe yeah. balances that out a little bit age-wise, which is which will be a nice aspect. Um, I see there's a lot of buzz about the game in the chat. People have been saying things like this is their most uh, hyped Essen game. Uh, and there's someone oh. asking about um, plans of what's coming next. What's next after this? Uh, for Capstone in general or for Uwe Rosenberg? Uh, do you know? Uh, can you answer either of those questions? <laughs> yeah, I guess we can talk about um, Well, um, so one of the things that we haven't personally announced yet, um, which I guess would be a good time maybe to do that now, I guess. <laughs> but we are going to be bringing uh, Glass Road back to print in early April next year. So, Ooh, yeah. exciting. Oh, and that, I think there's going to be some happy people. Some yeah. very happy people. Yeah, I, I absolutely exciting love that news. game. Um, that's one of my favorites from Uva, and we're going to have also all the promos that were originally released with it available as well. So we got this whole whole package coming for that, and really excited for that. So that's um, very exciting but, news. Yeah, and we've got a couple other new product like projects going right now at the same time. But uh, right now we're really just honestly focused on getting New York Zoo out there. I mean, we've we've been sending pre-orders out, and for people that pre-order the elephant that you're going to get is um more of a screen printed one with all the colors on both sides to make it look like a real elephant so it's kind of cool a little fun treat there for people that have pre-ordered so yeah that's where we're at Very right nice. now fantastic yeah. well thank you so much is there yeah. anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up um no i just appreciate you guys taking the time to host this event and everything and uh, always love being a part of it and wish we could do this in person but uh hopefully next year that'll happen yes yes everyone will be in that back next year with uh with their bells on right yeah. yeah well thanks so much uh that was new york zoo from capstone games thanks again clay and take care